Om Gyana Chimarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militan Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasari Go Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This time it's a very worshipable time. Anything in direct connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, is worthy of our respect, our prayers. People like their own birthdays. Although they were forced to take birth and endured months of misery in their mother's womb. So you might wonder why we would venerate the time and date of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The time of his advent in this world, which was not by force, your birthday was forced upon you. You didn't choose the family you took birth in. You didn't choose the place. Everything was forced, forced, forced by material nature. Yet we want to celebrate our birthday. <laughs> and if someone dear to us forgets our birthday, I don't know if any of you have ever done that. Uh, it's the result is disaster. When we think of how we were forced to take birth, we might assume that anyone who appears in this world came under the same pressure, the same restrictions, the same force. Actually, we are unborn, just as the Supreme Personality of God is unborn. But we are tiny, and therefore we become overwhelmed by identifying with the body. And in this way, we're trapped by material conditioning in a temporary material world. But when Krishna comes, that is a completely different story. And therefore, you can jubilantly chant the Hare Krishna mantra, knowing that Krishna and his appearance are not forced by material nature. When we talk about Krishna, we're also talking about Sri Krishna Chaitanya who is a very special appearance of Krishna. To understand Krishna is the greatest mystery in yoga, meditation, and metaphysical knowledge. Krishna is very bewildering. You see him with two hands and a flute, and you think he might be an ordinary human being. Especially because he dances with the girls. But all those activities and qualities of Krishna have nothing to do with the material energy. This is why it's difficult to understand Krishna and his pleasure pastimes. To understand how the ultimate source, the Supreme Absolute Truth, has pleasurable activities, reciprocation, relationships. This is the greatest mystery in spiritual life, far beyond 
God isn't. God isn't means to acknowledge that there is some supreme, some creator. And generally, once you go in that direction, which any civilized person should, once you accept Godism, then what's the next step? Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> I'm so fortunate I recognize there's a supreme being, so now let all the goodies come to me. <laughs> Prosperity religion. But what Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, has come to give is the purest love, a love free from any material motivation, material contamination. We're hung up on relationships. These days, people are in such relationship anxiety. Their family life's not working out. Their romantic relations aren't working out. We would think if we speculate that if there's a supreme absolute truth, that supreme has no relationships, no pleasurable activities, no reciprocation. Because we've all experienced such frustration in our material pursuit of those things. We then think we're so intelligent. <laughs> we then think we're so intelligent because we speculate that the spiritual must be the complete opposite of the material. In material life, you deal with forms, qualities, activities, names. So, aha, uh -huh. we have what we think is an aha uh -huh moment. <laughs> the ultimate reality must be devoid of name, form, qualities, and activities. Because I've experienced all that stuff and been all the miserable because of it. So this is what our imperfect intelligence dictates to us. We would never dare to consider that the supreme absolute truth is full of relationships that are perfect and pure. No material bodies, no material personalities, all spiritual forms, all spiritual personalities. How will we ever understand that? It's very difficult. The only one who can effectively help us to understand Krishna's personal realm and his personal activities, the only one who can help us to understand that is Krishna himself. It's just too perplexing. It's too baffling for us. Unconsciously, we're drowning in impersonalism and voidism. That means, first of all, we think if there's something spiritual, it's an all-pervading oneness. It's a mass of undifferentiated, pure consciousness, popularly known as what? The whatever. <laughs> Maybe some of you have vibrated that mantra yourself. You know the whatever. Or you're a voidist. Well, ultimately everything is nothing, you know. The universe came from nothingness. We all came from nothingness. Before birth, we didn't exist. And... After death, we won't exist. So why worry about what you do in this brief 
interval between nothingness and before birth and nothingness after death. What do you think? Very enlightening. Some people say it's the honest reality. The universe is cold and indifferent. Get used to it. Make your own light. Make your own truth. Make your own way. What do you think? How are we going to escape from such utter darkness? How will we ever make the leap to understand that the ultimate reality is full of activities, personality, quality, qualities? How will we ever get that far? At the end of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Abandon all your concoctions of what you think is spiritual and just take my plan. Krishna said that approximately 5,000 years ago when Bhagavad Gita was spoken. But we resisted. When I say we, I mean human beings as a collective. Who is this Krishna telling me to do things his way? I know what I'm doing, right? We all have some kind of confidence that we know what we're doing, even though you, if you take a quick look at your life, you see it's a mass of confusion and delusion. But as long as the money is coming in, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and as soon as the money stops, then we're totally bewildered. Maybe I should go to church. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding Krishna is extremely difficult because he has those activities. He's had he has loving reciprocation. He has all the things we want. And that's why we're envious of it. can Krishna be the supreme when he has activities, loving affairs, friends, parents? We all want those kind of relationships to last, but they don't. And they're such a, such a frustration for us. So when we hear about Krishna's personal loving reciprocation with his perfected devotees, we dismiss it all. And because we're influenced by impersonalism and voidism, Godism looks attractive to us. Oh God, whoever you are, give me what I want and I'll worship you. That's spiritual life. That's all it is. How do you love someone you don't know? Anyone here had experience of that? You love someone because you're attracted. So what is attractive about the Supreme Personality of God? That is the essence of spiritual life. Krishna is unlimitedly, infinitely attractive. Especially by his reciprocal relationships. He's full of relationships. The Vedas say, Rasovaisa, the Supreme Absolute Truth is the ocean of all relationship flavors. So why do we want a nice family life, nice parents, nice children, and nice romantic affairs with our partner? We want all that because we're tiny parts of Krishna who has all that unlimitedly and perfectly. But it's as difficult for us to understand. That's why Krishna himself comes as his own devotee to show us how to love Krishna. 
Now we're going to get a little deep. We're going to talk about Radha Krishna. In one of our outreach centers in New Zealand, one young lady from Japan popped in for the first time. And she saw her first look at, just like you have on the wall back there, you have Radha and Krishna. So for the first time, she saw a painting of Radha and Krishna. So she stared at it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then she came up to me and said, who's the girl with him? <laughs> <laughs> I want it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Krishna is unlimitedly attractive, but Krishna is never separate from Radha, his pleasure potency. Now we're going to try to explain to you something that's beyond time and space. But because our intelligence functions only in that way we have to use some terms of time and space so when krishna wants to enjoy what does he do of course krishna always enjoys so how can you say when krishna's not beyond time when krishna wants to enjoy he manifests his pleasure potency just like the sun manifests sunshine. Of course, the sunshine, relatively speaking, is always there because the sun is always shining. Similarly, Krishna always has his pleasure potency. It's always in operation. This is the true meaning of Krishna being infallible. He never fails in enjoyment. That understanding is far beyond Godism, isn't it? Krishna never fails in his enjoyment. And what about us? <laughs> it's rare that we don't fail in enjoyment. <clears throat> so when Krishna wants to enjoy, which is infinitely and perpetually, <laughs> nonstop, but for the sake of discussion, we use when. He manifests his pleasure potency. His own energy for giving him enjoyment. In that way, you see, Krishna is self-sufficient. Everything is his energy. He's not going outside of himself. When we want to enjoy, we have to go outside of ourselves, take a risk. But everything is Krishna's energy. So when Krishna wants to enjoy, he manifests his own pleasure potency and has pleasurable activities with his own pleasure potency. <clears throat> and that's the so-called girl with Krishna. She is the perfect emblem, the crown jewel, so to speak of Krishna's pleasure potency, the culmination of Krishna's pleasure potency. Krishna's pleasure potency is very difficult to understand. Even Krishna does not understand his own pleasure potency. So if you ever wonder, all right, you think you're formulating a nice Zen Cohen or something like that. Can God create something that he doesn't understand? In order to be complete, he has to be able to create a puzzle for himself that he can't solve. Yes, Krishna creates a puzzle that he can't solve, but then he solves it. What is that puzzle? My pleasure potency is so attractive. I'm so much bound to my pleasure potency. I'm so much always eager to engage in loving affairs with my pleasure potency. Why? 
Why am I so attracted? Krishna can't understand that as Krishna. But then again, remember, Krishna always has his pleasure potency. It's his. So as Krishna, the supreme enjoyer, he can't understand the enjoyable in terms of that position, being in that role. You could say, and this is not so easy to understand, but sometimes people can click on it. Krishna is the supreme male that's beyond mm, material gender roles of matter. Krishna is the supreme male and his pleasure potency is the supreme female. The two are always together. And in the perfection of spiritual life, the transcendental female overpowers the transcendental male. That's real woman's liberation, which has nothing to do with the material body and material mind. Krishna becomes overwhelmed by his pleasure potency. Srimati Radharani. And he himself is perplexed. How is it? I'm so attracted to her. He's perplexed, honestly. His own pleasure potency is so infinitely beautiful that Krishna comes under her control. And he's wondering, how, why, who, what, where, when? <laughs> so he wants to understand what it's like to be the object of his love. Krishna is so attracted to Radharani. And therefore, he's always instigating loving affairs with her. So he's wondering, why? What's, why? what's she got going for her that she's so attractive? I can't resist. He can't understand this as Krishna. He's the subject, the initiator of the loving affairs. He's not the object. But he wants to understand what it's like to be the object of love the object of his loving advances. He wants to understand that, but he can't do it as Krishna. He has to take the position, the role of the object. Instead of being the supreme lover, he has to take up the position of the supreme beloved. That's his pleasure potency. When he does that, he is Lord Chaitanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Therefore, the bhakti yogis recite a very profound mantra. Sri Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nayanya. Lord Chaitanya is Radha Krishna combined. He's Krishna, who's taken the position and the emotions of Srimati Radharani to explore it and try to understand what's it like for her to love me? What is it? What's the experience like? What does she taste in me? What does she feel when she loves me? I can't understand it as Krishna. Let me take her position. Let me take up her emotions. So Krishna is so absorbed in this mission of understanding what it's like to be his own beloved that his complexion changes from dark blue to gold because Srimati Radharani is golden. So therefore you have Lord Chaitanya, Gauranga, golden limbed because He's Krishna so absorbed in the emotions of the Supreme Beloved, Srimati Radharani. I often give the example of how 
impotent we are just trying to be the supreme lover. We have difficulty pulling that off, although we can present ourselves in that way as being some kind of expert lover. But could you ever think that you could take the role of your beloved just to understand what the beloved is going through in receiving your loving affairs? Can't do it. But Krishna can do that. So Radha and Krishna are the perfection of love. The ultimate perfection of love. So much so that you can't call what human beings indulge in as love if you know the standard set by Radha and Krishna. Some may think this is very discouraging. Well, just because Krishna's got it all, Radha and Krishna have it all, that means what? We're doomed? What are we going to do if we don't try to love? <laughs> That's why the whole goal of Bhakti Yoga is that we revive our love for Radha and Krishna. And to teach us how to do that, Krishna comes as his own devotee, Lord Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to show how to love Krishna. He's Krishna showing by example. He's Krishna who's in the role of his own devotee, teaching us how to love Krishna. So this is the most fascinating reality at the pinnacle of the yoga and meditation system. You have to deal with love in your spiritual practice. Otherwise, what's the use? You'll just be an impersonalist. You'll just be a voidist. Because of our lacking knowledge of the ultimate reality. There must be loving reciprocal affairs in the ultimate source. Otherwise, how in our shadowy, perverted world, there are attempts at love and reciprocation. So what is the perfection of that? We know the corruption, the problems. But what is the perfect and pure origin of our frustrated attempts at loving relationships? Because as you know, even you get what you want in your loving affairs, what happens? It doesn't last. So one way or another, you get frustrated. You get frustrated either by the Quality or the duration. Even when you think, oh, this is great, this is going good, you know, it won't last. At least, if nothing else, death finishes everything in terms of the body. So we're all hung up on the love thing. <laughs> and out of frustration, we may become an impersonalist no individuality, no personality, just the oneness, you know, the whatever. Or we become voidness. There's just nothingness. Nothingness is. Before death, before birth, nothingness. After death, nothingness. Why worry then what happens in between these? Two huge expanses of nothingness. Just do whatever you like. The show will be over soon. What do you think? Because we lack knowledge of the ultimate reality. And that knowledge is not just like doctrine or dogma. Catechism stuff. That knowledge leads to experience. And so you... In order that you can experience what is Krishna, what is Krishna's pleasure potency, what is Radha and Krishna, 
the supreme male, the supreme female. So you can experience that in all its pure spiritual glory. Krishna comes as his own devotee to show you how to love Krishna. People talk about something being cool. There's nothing more cool than this. <laughs> But it, there's more. What does Krishna do when he comes as Lord Chaitanya? He distributes love of Krishna. How can you distribute love of someone no one knows? But Lord Chaitanya distributes the taste of loving Krishna to people who have no idea who is Krishna. And how does that happen? Just by our chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra and dancing and taking food offered to Krishna. You're tasting love of Krishna. And according to your spiritual advancement, that taste becomes stronger and stronger. So anyone, even they don't know anything about Krishna, can immediately start to taste love of Krishna. That's the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna coming as his own devotee, who's showing how to love Krishna and distributing love of Krishna. So in the very beginning, we're talking about the time for Lord Chaitanya's appearance, which is just about now. in the place in India where he appeared. At that time, there was a lunar eclipse. And so out of tradition, all the people were in the Ganges River chanting Hare Krishna because out of tradition, that's what many would do whenever there's a lunar eclipse. The devotees of Krishna knew what was going on at that moment. And they were deliriously jubilant with delight. Everyone is chanting Hare Krishna at the moment of Lord Chaitanya's appearance. They didn't know. They just thought there's a lunar eclipse. Let's all go into the river and chant Hare Krishna. Some devotees they understood. So from the very beginning of Lord Chaitanya's appearance, people were chanting Hare Krishna more and more. And as a little child, he wouldn't stop crying until the ladies surrounding him and his mother would chant Hare Krishna. So from his very appearance in this world, he's causing the chanting of Hare Krishna. And from that birth and the time of his birth, he set off a wave of chanting of Hare Krishna that would soon not only cover the world as it's done now, but cover the whole universe. This is a very special appearance of Krishna. Actually, Lord Chaitanya is not an avatar in the proper terminology. He's avatari. He's the source of all the avatars, just as Krishna is. They are a twin reality, Krishna and Krishna Chaitanya. Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. Krishna Chaitanya is the devotee of the supreme enjoyer. You cannot disturb Lord Chaitanya by treating him as the supreme enjoyer. He's Krishna in the role of being a devotee. He doesn't want to be disturbed by your treating him as 
the ultimate enjoyer. He's showing you how to be the ultimate servant, the ultimate friend, the ultimate lover, the ultimate child of the Supreme. He's showing you how to taste that more precisely. That's how to be it, but how to taste that relationship with Krishna. So our chanting of Hare Krishna and our dancing and tasting spiritual food. These are the gifts of Lord Chaitanya, who's made self-realization and enlightenment so easy in this most perplexing day and age when everyone's bewildered. No one knows how to solve human problems. Everyone is increasing in anxiety disorders, depression, substance abuse. Now more than ever, we need to explore the gifts of Lord Chaitanya, who, as the advanced bhakti practitioners know, who is Radha Krishna combined. He's Krishna fully absorbed in the position and emotions of Krishna's pleasure potency, Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is the leader in thinking about Krishna. And so Krishna wants to take up her role to experience what's it like to always think of me? What's it like to love me? I often remember, you may have heard me say it before, there was one famous Hollywood star. I believe it was Christopher Reeves. Anyone ever heard of him? And he was a star until I think he fell off the horse or something like that. He once told the media, he was so impressed with himself, he said, you know, I would date myself. <laughs> you can't do that, though. But Krishna can do that. <laughs> Krishna wonders, what do my devotees taste in me? Why are they so enlivened by loving me? What's it like to be in love with me? He can't understand it as Krishna. So he comes as Lord Chaitanya, his own devotee. He comes as the lover of himself. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> and he teaches by example how to love Krishna. And as I said before, he distributes the taste of loving Krishna even to those who don't know anything about Krishna. That's inconceivable. He gives you the taste, the initial taste, through chanting, dancing, tasting spiritual food, associating with devotees. And then you can decide, do I want to pursue this relationship? Just like if any of you have been to India, where there are the whole street of sweet shops. I think our Omar Vrindavan had his more than his fill. <laughs> <laughs> too much <laughs> so the sweet shop owners can often beckon to you as you're walking by on the street come 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 please come come in my shop sit down and they offer you a a little sweet and you try to refuse no no oh, you must take you must so the idea is that first you'll, you'll take a sample and then you'll want to buy more. So this is what Lord Chaitanya does. He's coaxing you. Come on, come on. Chant a little, dance a little, taste this food. Surely you'll want to enter into the bhakti experience. You don't know who is Krishna. But Lord Chaitanya is distributing to you the preliminary taste of loving Krishna. And then it's up to you how deep you want to go. 
But just by your getting that preliminary taste, your life will never be the same. Maybe you won't pursue that preliminary taste in this lifetime, but you'll, the credit will stay with you into the next lifetime. You never lose it. So, taking up Lord Chaitanya's offer is a win-win situation. <laughs> Even if you say, ah, oh, I came to that special event at the, at the Krishna place on this Gaur Purnima, this special day today. Uh, and then you get so busy in life as happens, economic affairs, family affairs, and you never make it back this whole lifetime. It happens, you know. You keep intending, I need to return to that place. What they said made a lot of sense and the food was so good. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about that. <laughs> you keep meaning to come back, but and then you meet with an unexpected death. Is that the end? No. The credit you get just by your acquiring a, an initial, very preliminary taste of Lord Chaitanya's mercy that will you'll carry that with you lifetime after lifetime. And what to speak of those who pursue in this lifetime that flavor, that initial preliminary experience. So we're very happy that so many of you have gathered here tonight <laughs> for our older practitioners in terms of spiritual age. We know that Radha Krishna means the exchange of love, but no love materially contaminated or related to material bodies and minds. Do you think Krishna, the supreme reality, would enjoy temporary material bodies? <laughs> no way. The Supreme Enjoyer associates with pure spiritual bodies like his own. And he's inviting you, trapped in a material body that, that we are, he's saying, come back to me, revive your spiritual bodies and dance with me. So Lord Jaitanya is giving the knowledge and experience of how to Reunite with Krishna in pure love, in pure relationships, pure activity. So now we can have some chanting, some kirtan, because that is the gift of Lord Chaitanya. Thank you, Hare Krishna.